Hello, Peter Four Seven Nine Zero or Cyrus here, and for this video, I'm going to be reviewing Fire Emblem: Path of Radiance. As I was playing through Fire Emblem: Genealogy of the Holy Wars on my first playthrough, by the way, so I'm not really sure where that game would rank with the other games. I thought it'd be fun to re review Fire Emblem since I'm such a huge fan of the franchise. That and the date of when I upload up load this video is probably my birthday, so I thought I would do something special. So I decided to review my second favorite game in the series, Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. Why I decided to pick Path of Radiance over Blazing Sword is because I kind of talked about Blazing Sword in my top 10 favorite games of all time video. And my other reason is probably because Fire Emblem Path of Radiance was actually going to be on a home console in the US. I mean. The other Fire Emblem games was on the home console, such as Genealogy of the Holy War being on the Super Nintendo. But for in the US, the only Fire Emblem games we had were on the Game Boy Advance. So getting one on the home console was pretty exciting. Fire Emblem Path of Radiance is also probably my favorite game on the GameCube. Now without further delay, let's begin the review. Fire Emblem Path of Radiant is a strategy RPG that was developed by Intelligent Systems and published by Tendo. Graphically? The game isn't really pulling anything special. The graphics themselves are pretty nice for the GameCube, but it's nothing groundbreaking. I would put them around the average above average level. Though we'll have to note that it is easier to determine which are unique characters by looking at the character model, which could be a pretty good thing since recruiting certain characters, especially enemy characters, can be less of a hassle. The animations themselves are mostly pretty good, though they're a bit stiff at times. You'll we'll have to say that the scale animation looks great. And for this first iteration into the 3D model area, I have to say it's a good first step. And I have to say that the FMV looks great as well. There's also a good amount of environments when you go through the game, which is also nice. The story in Fire Emblem Path of Radiance is also pretty good. The game gets you to Fall Ike, a trainee in the mercenary group called the Grey Mercenaries. It's also the son of the leader of that said group. While the Grey Mercenaries are doing a couple missions, such as defending the villages against bandits, showing Ike the robes of how to become a proper mercenary, their homeland of Crimea is invaded by neighboring Dayan. After special circumstances, the group is now tasked with helping the princess of Crimea, Elincia, to overcome the forces of Dayan. Overall, the story itself isn't really anything new. I have to say it's very well executed, and there was a good amount of intrigue and twists that made me want to play the game further to find out what happens next. The story had enough twists and intrigue in it that got hooked into the story, but not enough that it could be called convoluted. The characters are also pretty good, with a good amount of them having a good amount of backstory when you get them into support conversations with other characters, or from the info section when you're in the base during the chapter preparation screen. My favorite character in the game would probably be Jill in terms of characters, or Alencia. As for Ike, I say I like him as a protagonist since he does say some memorable lines when he's facing certain bosses. The music is also pretty good. And I have to say I love the Burning Ambition, Black Knight, and Rallying the Spirit theme. So I have to say the soundtrack is pretty solid. Voice acting in the game is a bit meh, but that can easily be overlooked since the FMV are the only parts that has voice acting in it. Overall, Fire Emblem Path of Radiance got a solid presentation. And I have to say it's a really good first step of the Fire Emblem series using 3D models. Now for all the newcomers to the Fire Emblem series, I should explain how the game works. The game plays out like most SRPGs where it takes place on a grid system where you have to move individual characters to attack enemy units or achieve certain objectives in each individual maps. Though take note that if you do attack an enemy unit, they will almost always counterattack, unlike in other SRPGs where the enemy will really only attack when it's their turn. In order to advance through the game, you have to take account to several factors. 
Let's just walk past the units are. What weapon is the most effective against certain type of enemies? Movement range, etc. Knowing both your own units and enemy strengths and weaknesses will be the key difference between sweet victory and bitter defeat. What sets Fire Emblem apart from other SRPGs are two features in my opinion. One is the permanent death feature in Fire Emblem. What I mean by that is that once your character health reaches the zero, there is no way to revive them. No Phoenix Downs, no life bottles, nada. When your character is gone, they're gone for good. The second is the individuality of characters. Each character in the game belongs to a certain class, but they got their own unique stats, stack rolls, support combos, that makes each character really different from each other that will make player really connected to certain characters, such as me being such a Maya fanboy in the game. Fire Emblem Path of Reigns retains most of what the previous Game Boy Advance Fire Emblems had. They got the weapon triangle system, which worked as the rock paper scissors system. That's pretty well balanced that gives you an advantage for utilizing the system, but it doesn't make the game over reliant on it. The classes are mostly the same, with each of them being very unique from each other, and each having their pros and cons. I know that you can make your character even stronger by promoting their classes, either by the traditional way of Fire Emblem, by using a promotion item where your character reaches level 10, though it's really ideal to reach level 20 in the older games, or by reaching level 21 in this game, which is a new feature of Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. As the older Fire Emblem games, you couldn't really promote without a promotion item. So when you reach level 20 in the older games, you stay level 20. You couldn't class it up. You couldn't get stronger until you get the item. So it's a less of a hassle in this game when you're classing up. The rescue system is also returns, which allows a unit that has a higher con or build to carry the character with penalty to stats, mostly speed. And it's pretty useful to get characters out of certain situations. The Magic Trinity system is also returns. Though not in the same way as the other games. The Magic Trinity system works within the Anima School of Magic, with water, thunder, and fire. Though I was a bit disappointed that there wasn't a class for shamans in this game, which means no dark magic, so there's no longer the traditional Trinity magic system, such as light being dark, dark being anima, anima being light. And I kinda missed it since I love using Canis in Fire Emblem Blazing Sword. The linear nature of Fire Emblem Blazing Sword is also in Path of Radiance, which I really like, since it gives both short term strategy in utilizing each of the game mechanics to the fullest to overcome the map that you are playing through, but also long term strategy, since you have to determine which character you have to level, since level grinding is impossible with the progression system that Path of Radiance has. Overall, almost all the mechanics of the Game Boy Advance Fire Emblem games are in Path of Radiance and they really give the game a great amount of strategy. Now I should describe the new mechanics that Fire Emblem Path of Radiance has. First is the skill system. Why the skill system isn't really anything new to the franchise, with Fire Emblem Path Genealogy of the Holy War having it? I think, I'm not really sure if any of the previous Fire Emblem games has it, but it's the first time that they appear in localized Fire Emblem games. Fire Emblem Path of Radiance Every character got their own unique skill, which will affect them in battle, such as the Vantage skill allowing the character to attack first, even if the enemy attack engage the battle first. There's both passive skills and certain skills that activate when certain conditions are fulfilled. The skills themselves are useful to be utilized in battle, but not too overpowered that they unbalance the game. Okay, m maybe except Aether, because that's really overpowered. You will also receive scrolls that have skills in them that you will be able to put into characters. So take note of the skill capacity as there is a limit to how many skills you can put. And you can't remove skills once it's on a unit, which can be kind of a pain in my honest opinion. The next major addition is the introduction to the Laguz unit. In this game there are special units that are able to transform into beast units. There's the Raven, Eagle, Cat, Tiger, and Dragon unit. While in their beast forms, they get significant stat boosts that can make them pretty hard to take down, but the game provides you multiple ways to take them down, such as using arrows against Raven and A Eagle since they're pretty weak against it, and dragons are weak to lightning magic, and can tigers being weak to fire, and etc. Overall, the Laguz unit provide a good amount of strategy to the games as enemies. 
Now as playable units where they kinda suffer. That's mostly because you can't really control their transformation. In order for the Lugus to transform, they will need transformation points which they get at the start of the, each turn. The problem is that their Himno forms aren't that useful. It's probably completely useless. And you can't really control the Lugus unit transformation as they automatically transform when they get enough points. Which can be kind of a problem when you don't really need them to transform at that part of the game. So overall, I don't really like the Legu's unit. They're powerful to use, but they're completely random. I I guess I wouldn't go that far. You can manipulate it a bit, so they're they're not that bad. And they're just not good units for me to use, in my honest opinion. Next thing I will explain is the support conversation system in Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. I love how support combo is done in this game. Rather than getting two characters to wait for a long amount to turn in battle like the previous games, it's set up that characters just have to be deployed together in subsequent chapters that they will be able to get support combos in the base section. This is improved from the older games as that ga those games really require you to get specific characters to be beside each other for most of the map, but sometimes that isn't really possible with how some of the chapter was set up. So the chapter support combo system is much better than the turn support combo system. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention this earlier. Support combo give various bonuses to characters if they're within three spaces for each other, which is very useful. Especially if your character got an earth affinity. Very useful. And that's mostly all the significant changes that Fire Emblem Path of Radiance got. I mean there are other additions such as forging, the halberder unit, bonus experience, etc. But explaining all that would take a very long time. Oh yeah, this one thing I forgot to mention. Biorhythm. I hate biorhythm. It determines if your character will either receive a bonus or penalty to your stats, but it's totally random. So you can't really take advantage of it. Which is really negative in my opinion. But it doesn't really affect stats all that much, so it's negligible. Overall, Fire Emblem Path Radiance retains most of the old Game Boy Advance Fire Emblem mechanics while adding new ones that brings a bit of variety to the game. Also add the well-designed maps, and Fire Emblem Path of Radiance is a great Fire Emblem game. If there was one thing I was kind of disappointed with, it was probably the difficulty of Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. I mean, it's not too easy. It's hard enough that you have to use every mechanic in the game, but it's overall still an easy Fire Emblem game. Though that's not to say this is an easy game by any means. But if I were to say where this game difficulty rates among the other Fire Emblems that I've played, it's harder than Fire Emblem Sacred Stones, but it's easier than Sealed Swords, Blazing Sword, and Radiant Dawn. But I still have to say that I love Fire Emblem Path of Radiance for all the stuff it added, improving on the support combo system along with other improvements. Overall, Fire Emblem Path of Rain is a great Fire Emblem game. It mixes the old Game Boy Advance Fire Emblem mechanics and its new mechanics very well, has well designed maps, got good characters and story, and proof on several of the old Game Boy Advance Fire Emblem mechanics, such as the support combo system. There are stuff I didn't like, such as the biorhythm, but I have to say it's a fantastic game. And even though I thought Fire Emblem Path of Rains is an easy Fire Emblem game, I have to say that the difficulty is really ideal for newcomers to the series. I personally give this game a 9 out of 10, a fantastic Fire Emblem game, and a great way for people who are new to the series to jump right on in. <laughs>